The mantra of the experts is that the risk of being taken by a shark while swimming, surfing or diving is so minuscule it's not even worth thinking about. But lately it seems the rate of shark attacks has well and truly been increasing. Every new incident, every tragic death or horrific injury invariably leads to arguments about the need to cull sharks so we humans can be safe in the water. Tonight, a breakthrough which could save man and beast. New technology guaranteed to keep us apart. But of course, there's only one way to find out if it really works. This has become an all too common event on our beaches. At Ballina on the New South Wales north coast, yet another shark sighting. Do you know what a great white shark looks like? Oh yeah, it was just really, really black and it had a white, like real white underbelly. <laughs> and you kind of, when it jumped, you could totally see everything because it did a big spin. All surfers have left the water this morning, except for one. His name is Tom Carroll, two-time world surfing champion and a living legend of the sport. Tom hasn't lost his mind. He believes he may have found the surfer's holy grail, a shark deterrent that actually works. So do you think it works? Are you convinced? I'm convinced about the technology. It's not new. On the bottom of Tom's board are two electrodes, which are powered by a switch in the tail pad. It's adapted from technology first trialled 20 years ago by shark naturalist Ian Gordon. What was your heart doing at the time? I was totally focused on making sure that that little button was turned on. And what happened as soon as you pushed the as button? As soon as I turned the button on, the shark was well within that force field. It took a big exit stage left and disappeared. Think of it like an electronic punch on the nose. This technology was developed into a trailing leash for divers and swimmers called the Shark Shield Freedom 7. You've got a really just a, a lithium battery in here that's a power generator and this cord's got two electrodes on it. You can see this bit of stainless steel here at the top and there's another piece down further down the bottom. You can see that there, that piece of stainless steel. So what happens is those electrodes use the salt water as a conductor and they connect together and they create this large electrical field. If you could, so you've got a big field all right. Absolutely, if you could visualise it, think of the shape of a football like that, about six metres by four metres. Talk us through the new surfboard version. Sure. Australian Lindsay Lyon so, runs Shark Shield, which has developed the new shark deterrent for surfboards. Really? The, the key to the technology is the electrodes. So what you've previously had in this... Correct. ..is now in that. That's exactly right. And the electronics are just going to fit and clip into the tail pad like that. So it's quite compact. And it'll screw down. But the Shark Shield Freedom surfboard device hasn't been tested before. So at dawn, we set a course for one of the great white shark hotspots, Neptune Island, South Australia. Ian Gordon, Tom Carroll, and Lindsay Lyon are on board. So, will it work on the bottom of a surfboard in deterring great whites? Very big day. I know that uh, for me personally, just to have that sense of security, you know, to be able to go out there and offer that to people uh, is, is paramount. 
Once at South Neptune Island, the Calypso's boat crew chum the water and it doesn't take long for our first great white shark to appear. Oh, that's a nice animal. Maybe four metres, getting close to four metres. That's beautiful. Dinosaur. Living dinosaur. So we know there's a great white shark in the water. He's a, a male, just under four metres long. In a few seconds, we're going to hop in the cage. We're going to put the float out into the water and we're going to see how the sharks react when the shark shield device isn't switched on. Just that run that line out behind it, guys, as you're going. Someone get in there. Get the right straight after. It's simply incredible to be so close to an animal that survived for 400 million years. Are they clever? They're as clever as anything. Uh, if you look at that eye, you probably notice that everybody thinks they're just this big, lifeless black eye and there's an eyeball in the middle of that eye, and as it goes past, it's fixed on you. The test unit has been specifically designed not to look like a surfboard, so as not to promote the idea of surfers as food. The boards are rectangular and crossed over, and with the shark shield turned off, the sharks simply bump it out of the way. Oh, yeah. This aggressive young shark even has a go at the unit itself. So this time we're putting the float out with the shark shield on. Let's see what the difference is. This is the critical moment, and initially Lindsay Lyon likes what he sees. Oh, look that. that looked like a pretty decent turn, didn't it? The sharks chasing the bait, quickly turning away from the test unit. Yes, look at that. He won't even come over to the bait. What does that make you think, Tom? You, you feel a bit more confident about going in the water with one of those up? Yeah, after seeing this, this close. To me, it's a big shark. Yeah. Like, you know, and it was like it, it was aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Had a couple of good moves at it, and it didn't, it didn't penetrate. Then it went around and turned around really fast. Back. Yeah. <laughs> but not all the sharks reacted the same way. This great white doesn't seem put off chasing the bait at all. What's becoming apparent is that today there isn't enough weight on the board to properly submerge the electrodes. No, but see, when it was sitting in the water just then, you could hear it beeping? Yeah, yeah. That means uh, it's not active. All right, eh? There's no doubt about the technology. Technology's been consistently proven over 20 years. We've just adapted it into a user model that works for surfers. You know, is it the panacea of the world? Can the technology continue to advance and improve? Absolutely but this solution will definitely work as a deterrent. Oh, see, he didn't like that. Did you see that? Oh, he didn't like that at all. Does the shark shield surfboard device work? At this stage, I, I can't say anything um, about its effectiveness. You just haven't tested enough. We, we would be interested in testing it. We haven't done that. We would like to... Um, put as much effort into testing the surfboard-mounted shark shield device as we have for the Freedom 7. 
Professor Sean Collin of the University of Western Australia was commissioned by the state government to study the effectiveness of shark deterrent technologies on the market. The clear winner was the Shark Shield Freedom 7 leash device. The Shark Shield has received the most scientific attention and uh, is certainly the most effective that's currently on the market. In this footage, when the Shark Shield leash is turned off, the great white shark hits the seal decoy. When it's turned on, it leaves the bait alone. We had over 300 in interactions, both on our control and, and active uh, rigs in midwater, and we found that nine out of 10 times, the sharks were deterred by the active shark shield. What is it that the sharks have got that makes them receive electric fields? Sharks, like um, actually a number of other animals, have this quite amazing sense called uh, electroception a set of very sensitive receptors that are distributed over the head of the shark. So the idea behind what we're calling the shark shield device is that it exploits that electric field and turns it back on the shark. Well, that's right. But according to Professor Colin, it's not only what we can use in the water to repel sharks, it's also what we can wear. Sharks see in black and white, so contrast is of primary importance for visualising potential prey. So let's paint a typical scenario. A person in a wetsuit swimming along on the surface of the sea, maybe snorkelling, or a person sitting on a white surfboard. Mm -hmm. What does the shark see? So this would appear as a, a solid, um, high contrast silhouette against a lighter background, the space light. So for some sharks, especially white pointers, this would be seen as a potential prey item. So th they'd think we were a seal? We think that that could be the case. Um, and we're exploring um, currently the idea of, of mistaken identity. His research has shown sharks are much more likely to go for bait stuffed inside a black wetsuit than bait inside a camouflaged wetsuit. This finding is the subject of further research, but it's already led to the creation of these wetsuits by shark mitigation systems. The blue camouflaged suit for divers or swimmers makes them less obvious to a shark lurking below. So essentially it's just tricking the shark into thinking that you're not there. Well, well, well that's right. It, it's really um, enabling the shark to, to swim by um, and for the wearer to not be seen uh, at all as a potential food item. The striped wetsuit and board design for surfers in fact does the opposite. It makes them stand out. They may see a striped suit or the wearer of a striped suit as a sea snake, which typically most sharks would avoid. We want the shark to see the wearer um, and avoid it based on it perceiving uh, the, the suit as a noxious prey item. So if you're going out in the water tomorrow and you wanted to be really careful, you'd wear a shark camo suit with a shark shield Freedom 7. As, as a diver, that's, that's the approach I'd take. So your dream is that our fear of jaws may one day be history. Absolutely. What's it worth for you in peace of mind if this device, this technology does work? Oh look, there's no value. I mean, like, what, what's the value of, of your limb and life? Tom Carroll's so convinced of this new wave of technology hitting our beaches, he's now become an ambassador for Shark Shield. He likes the idea of surfers taking responsibility for their own safety as opposed to drum lining or shark nets. And as for how the weight of the new device affects performance, Tom says it's marginal. I would say, yeah, it's, it's very minimal. Very minimal, you won't feel it. 
and you feel reasonably confident to go back into the water using one of those devices. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I'm really confident. I'll, I'll go back out and I'll use it tomorrow morning. <laughs>